Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Locke. Welcome to another Gaffer and Gear. In this episode, we're gonna be looking at the Lightman Lux series of products from Lightstar. Now, in this episode, I'm gonna be assuming that you're a professional user, otherwise you wouldn't be looking at this sort of product, so we're just gonna get straight to the point. All right, so the first thing I wanna show you is it comes with um, all this gack for, uh, for rigging it, so you can basically use it as a space light. Now I've shown you that, I can take it off and get it out of the way. So let's talk about the build, and yes, this thing is heavy. It comes in at 20 kilograms. But here's what I like about the build. Now, with the exception of the stirrup, which has welds, okay, nothing else on this unit is welded. Everything is modular. And by modular, I mean with a toolkit, you can take the entire thing apart down to its components. So why is that handy? Well, let's say you're running a rental house and you've got a, a fleet of these and somebody manages to drop one and bend, say, up here, okay? They've completely bent it out of shape. It's not the end of the world. You don't have to replace the whole unit. You can just unscrew, take out the part that's damaged and replace that part. Now, where this is also super handy is, let's say, for example, you have one of the 12 bank units and somebody manages to smash a light. Who knows how, they just managed to smash one and that 12 bank unit needs to go out on a job tomorrow. Well, that's no problem at all. You could momentarily harvest that part off another light. So you could, for example, get one of the lights here using a Allen key, undo two screws, literally disconnect the cable, and you can harvest this part temporarily and put it into another light, okay? You can do that with pretty much all the bits and pieces. So that is super handy. Now, where that is good into the long term, let's say 10 to 15 years from now, um, this investment isn't, uh, isn't turning over anymore. It's not as popular as it was or it's superseded. Um, you've got a fleet of these and it's not worth repairing them anymore. It's nice to have them there. It's nice to have them going out occasionally, but it's not worth the repair costs of fixing one that breaks down. Now, where this is super handy is you can harvest uh, a unit that's not working. You can harvest all the spare parts off it and use those spare parts to keep the rest of your inventory running. So just in case you're not familiar with the product, I should point out that they do come in different sizes from a single light all the way up to a 12 light unit. And the next thing to point out is these units are bicolor from six and a half thousand Kelvin all the way down to 2,800 Kelvin. All right, so they're not RGB and they're very heavy. So why would you be interested in buying them? Well, I sort of wondered that too. And then I found the missing bit of the puzzle, the price list. These things are incredibly cheap for the amount of firepower that you get. All right, so we're gonna talk about the amount of firepower that you get, and then we'll circle back to the price because that'll, that'll have more dramatic effect. All right, so at three meters, set to 5,600, so set to daylight, so set to 5,600, this unit came in at um, 11,100 lux. So what does that compare to? Okay, so basically I got some other fixtures out and tried to find the closest thing I could that had a light level match to this. Now the closest thing I could find was an M18. Okay, so an M18 HMI in flood comes to 12,700 lux. Now I just want to point out there, I didn't take that reading in the middle of the M18 beam where it's got the dull spot. I moved the meter around and I got the hottest reading I could find and I put that down, okay? So with this unit, I took an average reading and with the M18, I found the hottest point. So basically I'm erring on the side of caution with what this thing outputs in terms of its comparisons. All right, so how does this compare to an M18? Well, this is 87% the brightness of an M18, so 87% the brightness of an M18, so that's in daylight. Now, with the unit in tungsten, so comparing uh, uh, apples to apples, so I thought I'd compare it to another tungsten light, okay? So straight away I thought, I reckon I know what this is close to, so I got out a Studio 5K. The Studio 5K came in at 7,250 lux, and this unit came in at 
9,740 lux. So this unit comes in at 34% brighter than a 5K. Now I just want to point out because uh, the majority of people who will be into this detail are gaffers. That's not a Bambino 5K, that's a Studio 5K with a 12 inch lens and that 5K has a shiny, almost new reflector. So that's an Optimum 5K I'm comparing it to. All right, so you get a lot of output. So, okay, it's, it's heavy and it's got a lot of output. Why would you buy it? It's still heavy. Okay, this unit will sell in Australia for three and a half thousand dollars plus GST. So three and a half thousand dollars plus GST for that sort of firepower. Uh, bicolor tunable and built-in lumen radio. That's pretty cheap. Now here's the crazy bit. The 12 banker, the big unit, that'll sell for about $8,300 plus GST. Now that thing outputs more than a 4K HMI. And if you live in a 230 volt country, you could power it off a domestic power outlet. Now let's talk about the power draw. This thing is advertised as 720 watts max. So uh, according to my meters, this thing doesn't get anywhere near 720 watts. So 720 watts must be the maximum that this thing is ever going to draw, and that must be taken into account in rush current. So what I found with the unit is the warm white emitters, so basically having it at 2,800 Kelvin at 100%, this thing was pulling 636 watts. Now at the other end with the cool light emitters running at full blast, that's at 6,500 Kelvin, this unit was pulling 590 watts. And in the middle point, which is uh, 4,650 Kelvin, this unit was pulling 626 watt. So it is pulling well under the 720 watts maximum that the manufacturer claims. All right, so let's fire it up and go through the basic operation. So when you fire the unit up, it always turns on in this basic home page menu. Now to select what you're changing from this basic menu, you press the up button. So you only press the up button. So you don't press the down button to, to go down to change the next thing. You just press that up button and it selects what you're changing. So there's our Kelvin, for example. So pretty straightforward. Okay, press the up button again, up comes our brightness. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Now the down button does have a function in this mode. The down button basically toggles on and off. Okay, so press the down button, zero brightness, press the down button again, and it turns on again. So it turns on to whatever you had it uh, preset to brightness wise. So you can have it standing by to brightness, press the button and bang. So just to show you that, let's set it at 79% and off. Okay, and turn it back on bang, straight away 79%. Now the one thing that's really interesting with this unit for the firepower that it's got, okay, think about it, so it's uh, uh, brighter than a 5K, almost as bright as an M18, all right, on and off instantly. Um, I can't think of any other high-powered uh, light sources uh, where I can, that I can do that with. All right, so anyway, getting sidetracked. Now, if you press the enter button, that gets you into your light mode. So you've got wall, which is basically the whole unit. You've got uh, rank, which is your individual rows. And then you've got individual, which is each of the individual lights. Okay, so I'm just gonna go into uh, rank mode. And uh, then basically you press enter to, to select. Now I'm just gonna explain a, a function in here, um, down the bottom. I'm gonna explain it but not show it. And I'm not gonna show it because it's a strobe. My rolling shutter in my camera can't cope with it, so it's not worth showing it, but it's worth talking about it. Okay, so basically you use the arrows to navigate around the menu, so it's all pretty straightforward. Okay, so here you've got uh, hertz. So basically that's your strobe. So if you select one hertz, it pulses once a second. It goes all the way up to 50 hertz, which is 50 pulses a second. Now what's interesting is you've got 100% brightness. So that's the 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 top of the pulse, okay? And the other brightness down here, that's setting the minimum on the strobe, okay? So you don't have to have it strobing full power to off, full power to off. You can have it strobing at full power to 50%, for example. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Let's uh, dim this down to uh, 8%. So we're adjusting rank number one. 
So I just dim that down really low so when I turn the light around it doesn't, um, it doesn't stuff the camera up. And let's set this, let's go extremes, let's set that to 6,500 Kelvin. Now you just scroll down and then you get to rank two. Let's set this to 3,000, uh, sorry, 2,800. Let's go all the way down and set it to um, uh, 8%. Okay, so basically I've just operated both ranks separately. So if I turn it around, we should have both ranks at different colors. So in a sec, we'll start playing with the DMX, but first off, let's go through the DMX options. So you press menu and go down to DMX and press enter. Okay, so you've got DMX address, that's pretty straightforward. The next one down is DMX mode. So you can select whether it's wall, rank, or individuals. And the next one is DMX switch. So you can select what DMX mode it's running off. So let's enter there. So you can have multiples turned on, which is what I like. So at the moment I've got hardwired DMX turned on. So that's your DMX cable plugging in, physical cable. And I've got the Lumen radio turned on as well. So I really like the fact that you can have simultaneous. So here's the thing. If you're operating this off Lumen radio, uh, and you have hardwired plugged in, hardwired takes precedent. Okay, so that, that is the priority. So what I like about this is you could have hardwired going in and you could have Lumen Radio as your backup. So if your um, DMX gets disconnected or the cable gets crunched, anything like that goes wrong, your Lumen Radio instantly becomes your backup system. Okay, so I'm sure by now you've probably noticed this flashing light and it's driving you nuts, you wanna know what it is. Okay, so basically that's your Lumen Radio status light. So when that light is off, it means it's not set up for Lumen Radio. When the light is on and flashing, it means it's set up for Lumen Radio but it's not receiving a signal. And when it is a solid light, it means it's receiving its Lumen Radio signal. So now we're gonna go through uh, the DMX and I'm gonna talk about the pros and the cons. Now with all of these things, it's regardless of whether it's um, Lumen Radio, hardwired, if you're using a slider console or if you're using an app like this. Um, it's, it's regardless. Okay, so um, the one thing that really impresses me with the system is, um, is its response from black. So let's go to black and then I'll count down and turn the light on. Watch how responsive this is. Okay, ready? Three two, one, bang. Okay, it is instant. So that's from zero to 100% instant. Okay, and the other thing that, um, uh, that impresses me with the unit is uh, how it fades up from black. Okay, so I'm gonna do a two and a half second fade up from pitch black. Okay, so watch how smooth this is. Now, again, that was from pitch black. That was from complete darkness. Um, absolutely fantastic. Now here's a negative with the system and that is um, it's a bit chunky on its fade downs. Okay so to really show this I'm going to set a, um, a five second uh, fade down on it. I'm going to turn everything off first apart from this then I'm going to do a five second fade down and you'll notice that it's steppy and again it doesn't matter if you're uh, using a manual slider or if you're using a touchscreen or a pre-programmed uh, duration like I've got here or if you're hardwired it's very steppy on its fade downs okay so let's uh, go to the Luxed and here we go so again um, all of those things are regardless of uh, if it's uh, Lumen Radio or hardwired now um, the next thing is um, basically how this unit goes to black. Okay, so if you have it set at 100% and then you go to 0%, it actually fades down. So it's a little bit odd. If you go the other way, if you turn it up, it goes straight on. But if you go from 100% to black, it has a fade down. Okay, so let's watch that. And in three, two, one. So the problem with that is you can't over DMX do, say, a strobe effect because that fade down gets in the way of the strobe and you can't do an effect like lightning, for example. Um, so that's pretty much the pros and the cons with the DMX. Um, I found the Lumen Radio on it to be super responsive in all other ways. So let's just have a look at the front of the unit and then start wrapping things up. There is a misperception that these are Fresnels. They are not Fresnels. 
Basically, the LEDs are, are organized in circles and each LED has a convex lens over the top. So a convex lens is different to a Fresnel. So it's just, they're orientated in uh, circles, which is a clever use of space. And then they've got a lens uh, over the top of each row of LEDs. Um, in terms of modifying your beam angle, you've pretty much got this, okay. And the other option is clip-on modifiers. Apparently they've got clip-on modifiers that change the beam angles. Um, I've only seen part numbers for these. I haven't actually seen a photo of them. Um, next thing is uh, the unit doesn't have uh, a, a rain protection rating. It's only IP20, um, so you shouldn't be using them in the rain, but they do have a rain jacket. Um, I haven't seen these. I've only seen a part number in a catalog, but a rain jacket does exist. Now, the only thing putting me off uh, buying these is the weight. Um, everything else about them is, is fantastic. They're super cheap and super powerful. And what we're going to mention in the technical review in a sec is the color render is, um, is staggering. It's one of the best color rendering lights I've come across. And that's almost right across its entire Kelvin range. Most lights are, are super accurate in daylight or super accurate in tungsten, um, with the exception of of really down low in the base bottom Kelvins, this thing is sensational color render. Um, but look, if you're thinking uh, like I was uh, yesterday, I got a bit excited about everything and thought, the only thing putting me off buying these is the weight. What if I take the ballast off? Okay, because uh, the ballast is basically just screwed on. What if I take the ballast off? Well, I got good news and bad news with that. The good news is you undo four screws and you can get the ballast off in about two minutes. The bad news is after you've done that, you discover that the ballast or the, uh, the LED controller box is extremely lightweight. It only, it only weighs probably under three kilograms. So it's not worth doing that, unfortunately. All right, let's get into the technical review and start looking at the numbers. Okay, so let's start off the technical review by looking at our CCT averages. So in your warm whites, that's anything below 4,000 Kelvin, it dials in a CCT with an accuracy of minus 90. Your mid whites, that's four to 5,000 Kelvin, it dials in a CCT with an average of minus 100 Kelvin accuracy. And in your cool whites, that's five to 6,000 Kelvin, it dials in your CCT with an accuracy of minus 117 Kelvin. Now above 6,000 Kelvin, the accuracy drops to minus 180 Kelvin, and above 6,350 Kelvin, you're basically turning the knob for no reason. Okay, TLCI scores, your TLCI, Television Lighting Consistency Index. Your warm whites, that's anything below 4,000 Kelvin, you're looking at a 98.5 average. Your mid whites, four to 5,000 Kelvin, you're looking at an average of 98. And in your cool whites, 5,000 to 6,000 Kelvin, you're looking at a 98.5 average. Now the color vector scores, these are the ones that are actually really important because these measure the color around the color vector at 99 points. All right, in your warm whites, you're looking at an accuracy of 95.1. In your mid whites, you're looking at an accuracy of 95.4. And in your cool whites, you're looking at an accuracy of 95. So just on a personal note, these are the highest color vector scores I've seen for an LED light across its entire CCT range. Okay, now let's have a look at output. So measuring lux at three meters, at 3200 Kelvin, it came in at 9740 lux. At 4400 Kelvin, it came in at 10400. And at 5,600 Kelvin, it came in at 11,100 lux. Now, for those of you who want to get really technical, the dimming system on the light engines is pulse width modulation. And according to my meter, it's running at 16 kilohertz. Now let's take a look at our more common CCTs. So when we dial in 3,200 Kelvin, we get 3,186 with a TLCI score of 99. Color vector testing reveals a more accurate score would be 96 with a color saturation of 102%. These are the individual CRI scores. 
and it is worth noting that R9 and R12 are both high. This is very unusual in LEDs. This is the color spectrum graph. Now the light is off the Planckian curve by a DUV score of 0.0027, which means if you wanted to color correct it, you would need a 1 8 plus green. Now let's have a look at 4,400 Kelvin. When you dial in 4,400, you get a CCT of 4,362 with a TLCI score of 98. TM30 color vector testing reveals a more accurate score would be 95% color rendition with 103% saturation. These are the individual CRI scores and as you can see, they are all 90 plus. This is the color spectrum analysis. And the white point is off the Planckian curve by minus 0.0025 DUV increments, which means it is about a 1 8 plus green correction out. And let's take a look at 5,600 Kelvin. When you dial that in, you get 5,498 with a TLCI score of 99. Color vector testing reveals a more accurate score would be 95% color render with 103% saturation. Here are the individual CRI scores and they are all 90 plus. This is the wavelength analysis. And color mapping reveals that the white point is very close to the Planckian curve and ever so slightly green at 0.0012 DUV increments, which would be the equivalent to half of a 1 8 correction gel. I'm Andrew Locke, don't forget to click subscribe and I'll see you on the next episode of Gaffering Gear.